One of the attractions of freeform looping is that it looks like so much fun to stitch. And it is. There's no need to follow a pattern. You don't even need to have an expected outcome in mind. The work process can be very loose and organic, but that doesn't mean there isn't design involved. So a key goal in this course is to integrate design considerations on a barely conscious level. To do that, first we have to address design consciously. For those of you who have taken my online courses New Age Looping Basics and Cross Knit Looping, this process will be familiar, but let's do a short review. Design is nothing more mysterious than making choices. Even if you don't think about it consciously, you make choices about design all the time when you combine your intentions with your taste and materials you're designing. Design elements include line, shape, form, texture, color, and value. Design principles are ways that we organize and arrange those design elements. Design principles include pattern, contrast, variety, proportion, repetition, and balance. Other intentions get pulled into the mix as well. Things like how do you want to use the piece, what materials are available, what colors are in your fiber stash. Consciously or unconsciously, these are all part of the design process. So let's look at the process that went into a sample project. I wanted to make a night light that would throw some fun shadows. I found these flickering LED lamps on sale and thought it would be fun to put them in a glass jar and cover the jar with a sheath of freeform looping. I chose variety and proportion as the design principles to focus on. I always suggest that you pick one or two design elements or principles to guide the choices you make as you plan a project. You can always change the plan. For materials, there was an empty quart jar on the shelf by my desk. And I had a small hank of hand-painted Irish wax linen, probably about 30 yards. I wasn't entirely sure that much thread would be enough for a quart jar. Should be plenty for a pint jar, but for a quart, it could be a little skimpy. But one of the things I love about freeform is that it gives you incentive to take chances. So the challenge I gave myself was to complete this project using just this jar and that thread, accepting the risk that I might run short of thread and have to figure out what to do then. Challenges like that are called constraints. Self-imposed constraints actually make design easier. When all the materials in the world are spread out in front of you, it takes a lot longer to decide what not to use and actually get started on the project. To get started on this sheath, I used a single needle chain to create a live edge. I worked back and forth for a while, adding thread as needed using the Trapped Tails Thread Edition method and decreasing to create a triangle shape. At the tip of the triangle, I transitioned into another needle chain.
remember my design focus in this project was variety and proportion. Needle chains are a great way to help you define space with a bit more visual weight than you get from a big lag when you're going for that kind of variety. Proportion was my other design focus. It can be a challenge to keep from varying the size of stitches at very regular intervals. When the intervals are regular, that's a pattern. I wanted a more organic feel for this sheath, so I made a conscious effort to mix it up. And since I wasn't entirely sure I had enough thread, I chose to make the proportion of large stitches and large open areas greater with just enough small stitches and dense areas for balance and to give me a place to trap tails from thread additions. In past classes, you saw maybe a couple of instances where I advised you to leave your tails hanging, generally for a specific reason. In this class, there are many times when it's wise to leave some tails hanging for a while. For one thing, they can signal that it's time for a change, a change in size, color, texture, whatever. But in this project, I mostly dealt with my tails right away using the trapped tails thread addition method. Even if you didn't particularly like the appearance of the trapped tails thread additions in the basics course, give them a try here. They add some texture and some variety to the visual weight in the piece. Just keep in mind that it may be harder to keep trapped tails secure where your stitchin stitching is very open and lacy. So use the need to trap tails as a signal to change your stitch density. And there's no reason why you have to run the tails in the direction you've always used. It may be a bit fussy to hold them the other direction, but give it a try so you can add that to your bag of tricks. Deal with challenges as they come up. For example, if you're getting frustrated with things slipping around, do more to anchor the piece. If you're a bit baffled about where to stitch next on a freeform piece, Divide some space and choose one defined area to work in. But as always, there's no one right way to do things. Trust your eyes and your instincts. That's it for lesson one. Remember to select one or two design concepts to guide you as you work some samples or a small project. In lesson two, we'll come back to design after you learn to integrate motifs. I'll see you there.